we suggest performing the suspension fork installation with two people. Using two people for installation will help reduce potential damage to parts and alleviate any headache. You'll need the following tools. One 3mm Allen wrench, one 4mm Allen wrench, one 5mm Allen wrench, one 6mm Allen wrench, one 8mm Allen wrench, a 15mm socket wrench, and an 18mm socket wrench, zip tie cutters, a rubber mallet, and a torque wrench. Begin by removing both handlebar grips. We suggest using compressed air between the grip and the handlebar to assist in removing the grip. Use a 5mm Allen wrench to remove the brake handles from both sides. Keep the bracket and hardware to the side for installation of both brake handles. To remove the display, use a 3mm Allen wrench. Do not remove the bolt that secures the display in place, but only loosen to the point that will allow the display to slide off the handlebar easily. Carefully cut all zip ties around the wiring harness, display, and brake cabling on the fork and then disconnect all respective wiring by gently pulling both male and female connectors straight away from each other. Be sure to disconnect the display, brake cables, headlight, and the lower portion of the wiring harness and set the wiring harness aside for installation on the suspension fork. Next, use an 8mm Allen wrench and 19mm socket wrench to remove the headlight by loosening the triple tree bolt that holds the headlight into place. Keep the current headlight bracket in place and the bolt for reinstallation on the suspension fork. Remove the front brake caliper from the brake caliper bracket with a 5mm Allen wrench. The bracket which holds the caliper on the existing fork will not be needed for reinstallation. Double check that all zip ties have been removed and set the front brake assembly aside for reinstallation on your new suspension fork. From this point on in the process, we recommend two people to avoid any damage. Remove the remaining two triple tree bolts using the 8mm Allen wrench and 19mm socket wrench. While one person performs the work, the second should hold the rear of the bike in place in order to avoid the spill out of necessary steer tube components. Use the 8mm Allen wrench to loosen and remove the steer tube bolt and the installed steer tube spacers. Keep these spacers for installation of the suspension fork. Pull apart the front handlebar while maintaining the force on the front wheel to avoid spacers from spilling out. Slowly remove the inner spacers and washers and set aside for reinstallation. Slowly pull the fork down and away from the down stem and set aside. Next remove the front wheel from the fork using a 15mm socket wrench. The following parts should be set aside for phase 2. Display, wiring harness, front brake line including the front brake handle, brackets and hardware, the steer tube washers and spacers which include the metal shim, plastic split washer, a 5mm spacer and 10mm spacer. Installation of the new fork. Grab your 5mm Allen wrench and start by ensuring that all 5mm stanchion bolts at the lower plate of the suspension fork are tightened to a torque of 11 feet per pound. At the top crown, loosen the four bolts with the same 5mm Allen wrench and pull the top crown away from the fork assembly. Some gentle force may be necessary. Next, use the 6mm Allen wrench to remove the handlebar clamp for preparation of the handlebar installation. Leave the two pieces aside for reinstallation. Before installation, make sure the bearing set is intact in the underside and top of the downstem. Grab the suspension fork and insert the steer tube into the downstem of your frame and place the steer tube washers in the following order. Split washer with thinner edge facing down, metal shim, followed by the dust seal cap with the rubber gasket. Reinstall the top crown onto the fork assembly. Some force may be required to fit the top crown which may involve the rubber mallet. Next, reinstall the tube spacers in the following order. One 5mm spacer followed by three 10mm spacers. Two additional 10mm steer tube spacers are provided with your order. Insert the new steer tube bolt into the provided steer tube cap and place into the steer tube and tighten using the 5mm Allen wrench. The steer tube bolt should be tight enough to hold the suspension fork in place without allowing the fork to fall to either side. Tighten the crown bolts at the steer tube using the 5mm Allen wrench. Tighten to a minimum torque of 16 feet per pound. Tighten the bolts, one at each stanchion, making sure that the preload caps have cleared the crown. Use a 5mm Allen wrench and tighten to a torque of 11 feet per pound. To install the handlebar, place the handlebar on the risers, then apply the clamp over the handlebar and loosely tighten using the 6mm Allen wrench. Adjust the handlebar angle to rider comfort, then cross tighten the clamp bolts to a torque of 20 feet per pound. Place the display on the handlebar. 
This will be tightened after the brake handle has been installed. Next, place both grips on the handlebar. This will help measure the install point of the brake handles and the display in the coming steps. Route the rear brake handle through the left stanchion and attach the rear brake handle on the left handlebar against the grip using a 5mm Allen wrench. Route the front brake handle through the left stanchion and attach the front brake handle on the right handlebar using the 5mm Allen wrench. Finish installing the front brake line on the new fork by attaching the front brake caliper to the fork. No caliper bracket is necessary as the caliper can be directly attached to the fork. A brake adjustment will be necessary when the assembly is finished. The brake line attachment on the front of the fork should be moved to the rear of the fork. Use a 3mm Allen wrench to remove the attachment, then place the attachment on the brake line and secure the brake line attachment to the fork. Apply a loose zip tie around the stanchion to hold the brake cable into place. For reinstallation of the front wheel, the two spacers provided in the original installation will no longer be necessary. Remove these washers before reinstalling the front wheel. Make sure the front wheel is properly seated in the fork dropouts and tighten the nuts with a 15mm socket wrench. Make all necessary connections by lining up the arrows of the male and female connectors and gently pushing them together. These connections are color-coded to aid in proper connection. This includes the main power connection of the wiring harness, both brake sensor cables, and the display. Turn the handlebar from left to right to check if the travel is interrupted by the battery. If not, then no further action is needed. If yes, then the controller may need to be adjusted to create more space for travel. To adjust the controller, unlock and remove the battery from your Super 73. Use a 4mm Allen wrench to loosen the three screws that hold the controller in place. Slide the controller towards the rear of the bike and then tighten the same three bolts. Adjustments must be made to ensure that the travel is not interrupted by the battery and the headlight cable doesn't pull. Before installing the headlight, make sure the headlight is tightened on the current headlight bracket. Do not over tighten as this may damage the tabs on the headlight that hold the bracket into place. Position the bracket on the installed bracket of the suspension fork. Insert one of the triple tree bolts and place the lock washer and then the nut. Tighten with an 8mm Allen wrench and 19mm socket wrench. Now make the connection from the headlight to the controller by lining up the arrows on the connectors and gently pushing together. Finally, attach the bump stops in their proper location by turning the handlebar in each direction and eyeballing the placement of the bump stop to protect the frame. Peel off the adhesive and place. Look over the entire assembly once more before your first ride to ensure that the bolts are secure and the assembly is properly installed.